Hello, this is Lolly. I want to talk today about storage systems for Rolodex cards. And as I mentioned before in my previous video, which I will link under this one, um, Heidi Swap came out with her own version of these supplies called Memory Dex, and that's two words. So I'll use the words interchangeably, but keep in mind that Ro Memory Dex does refer to her line of products. So Rolodex is just a generic term for the company that started making these files years ago. So this one is a nice metal one. It was brand new. It did come with cards and some dividers. I found it at a thrift store for 49 cents and it was brand new in the box. So I keep looking, you know, before I decided to go ahead with this craft, I was finding Rolodex stands all over the place at thrift stores and I wasn't buying them. So now, anyway, I did find a black plastic one as well. So I just keep looking in case anyone else needs them. And usually they're about $3 for what I'm finding, and I am finding some cards. So these are called the tray version. They do have the rotary kind, which it, all the cards go all the way around, and you can spin it. And um, Heidi Swap also has a tray and a rotary version. Now, this is what her tray looks like. And again, I see all her, um, her products for Memory Dex have been on clearance at Joann's this week. And um, I had seen this reviewed, and the problem people were having with it was that the runners here uh, go through holes on both sides of this box, which is a nice chipboard box, but then um, it went through the hole, and then the paper on the outside was just as thin as wrapping paper, so the, these runners would slide right through the paper and poke through. So I was proactive, and when I got mine, I took chipboard, wrapped it in gold paper, and glued it in on both sides of the, the runner ends, and that way these runners will not come come out of my box so that way it's, it's a lot more sturdy i just measured the edge and cut out some card um, chipboard and then she also has this is her version of the rotary one it does have a little uh, notch there to help spin the cards around when they're in there so this holds quite a few you'll notice when you first get it if you just put like one card on it's not going to stay in the top so it hangs so a lot of people actually will design their cards this way with the holes at the top. So it's just totally up to you and how you want to do that. And make sure if you're swapping with someone, you kind of specify whether you want your holes in the top or the bottom. And then there are a number of solutions for designing your own box um, from scratch or finding a box and from there um, adding runners into it. Let me just put some of these things away while I'm talking. So I was looking, basically I was looking at some wooden boxes and I was going to put some runners in there using quarter inch dowel rods, wooden dowel rods, and I had a box in my shopping cart at Hobby Lobby when I got to an end cap and I saw these magnetic cardboard boxes and I thought this would be perfect because I had a card with me in my pocket and that's a good way if you're shopping is to carry one of these in your pocket so you can measure the size there. And I thought two runners down here would be perfect because look at that so it just fits but then after I got home I realized that I could put there's my receipt here <laughs> the box was originally 11 but it was on sale I, anyway when I got home I realized what I could do was to put uh, two runners here and two runners here so I could run this way and I really like that idea better so here's what I decided to do and I'm not going to buy dowel rods. I got these, which are treat sticks from Wilson. And I see um, they're like for making cookies, sucker pops, and um, you know lollipops. And they're pretty hard. But they're also nice and smooth. Whereas a dowel rod, you'd have to sand it down and maybe even um, paint it if you want. So in order to do this without drilling any holes, I'm going to measure and cut this just the right side. I think I'll just use a craft blade. And then I am making these to go on the inside. I measured the inside to see how long to make this. And for me, it's going to be 10 and 3 quarter inch. For your box, it would be whatever is different. And um, if you can, you can cut two strips of chipboard, one on either side to hold your, your little runner. But um, if you don't have a chip, uh, anything to punch a hole in chipboard that's really thick like this, this would punch a nice hole in chipboard. If you don't have one, and you can do, you can punch the hole in one paper at a time. And this is not chipboard because I wanted it white. I went ahead and I cut 
10 strips of cardstock, and they're all the same. These are 5 eighths inch deep. Uh, I figure any higher than that, and um, my cards would be sitting up too high. And I also discovered that the holes in the cards are one inch apart from the center of one hole to the center of the other. So here's what you can do. Let me get a pencil here to show you, and I hope that this is going to show up well. I just kind of eyeballed as to where I wanted my um, cards to be. And then, let me mark this. I'm going to mark these holes where I want them to be. Okay. So once you have that, and like I said, it's one inch. If you take your, let's see if I can come up here or come down. There we go. Take your circle punch, your, your uh, hole punch, center it right over there, and punch the hole. So do that for all four, and then all you have to do, you can um, do all of them and then glue all the strips together. But always, here's my idea, is always to use this one then as your marking tool to mark all the spots in here. Otherwise, your, your lines tend to shift after a while, but if I always use this one, and I can even put a check mark to remind myself, always line them up with this one as to where your holes are going to be. And then glue all of these together. I just used a wet glue. And when I'm lining them up, you know, I don't always cut these exact because it's difficult to cut 5 eighths inch um, perfectly. But when you glue them, always glue, line up this edge together. And that way you'll have a nice smooth surface that your runners are going to glide again. So I'm going to pause and finish gluing all these together. Okay, I have those all glued together, and I have the one on top that had the little uh, notches I made out of the regular paper uh, punch. And I'm going to use this one now because this cuts through a lot of paper at once or a chipboard. See, like that. Now, um, if you have um, a, a, a thicker rod, because a one in, a quarter inch dowel rod is a little thicker than this, but still the cards will slide on it. But what you're going to want to realize is that your not all punches will cut a hole big enough for this to slide on it. So what you can do, let's see if I can get some scrap paper to show you here. Let's see if you cut, you need it a little wider, and this is your cut, but you need it a little wider. Just go slightly to the side See if you can see that. Slide to the side and make it a little bigger. That's all you have to do. Okay, make it wider for your little runner to go through. Okay, now the other thing is, let me get some of this out of the way. Um, because I just eyeballed where these, uh, how far in I was going to go, I want to make sure these line up the right way when I put them in. I don't want to flip one of these around or it might not work. So I'm just going to take my wet glue and glue these runners on there and on there. Let me try to get them lined up. Yes. <laughs> okay, so let's get. Oh. And this is the Scotch Quick Dry or uh, Tacky Glue, as it's called now. Stick that way at the bottom and push it in there and just hold it for a second. And then I'm going to use a craft blade and hope that will be uh, strong enough to cut through this. If not, we will have to go out in the workshop and cut it on a saw, but I'm hoping that this is going to work for us. Okay, and this one. Like I said, this tacky glue holds pretty quickly. If I notice it coming off, I, coming undone, I will apply more pressure. Nope, oh, there it is, coming undone. <laughs> I'm going to hold this for a minute. Okay, so you can see in here, I've got a runner down here and a runner up there. Now I need to cut these. I'm going to get one of my older blades uh, just so I don't dull this. And I want this at five and, looks like five and an eight, five and a sixteenth, I mean. Ah, da -da. So I'm going to start right there and see how well this is going to cut. I may have to slide it around and get the other side. It's going pretty well. And there. Okay, let's see if that's the right. I, I made it a little larger than I thought I would need it in case I need to just trim a little off. It's easier to trim some down than to make it larger. <laughs> so I'm just going to go around and just shave a little bit off until I get this the right size. And then I can use this one to measure the other ones. 
Oh, perfect. Okay, so now let's get the other ones cut. Okay, I have these cut. I went off camera to finish them, but what I did learn in the process, I'll show you. The fastest way to do it was to put my blade down, and while I'm pushing down with the blade, I'm rolling back and forth with my other finger. It went right through without ha any of the hassle. So it was a lot quicker, a lot smoother. Let's open this up and get those down in there. There's one, two, three, and four. So I loved being able to go crossways in this and therefore being able to uh, use these sticks because I really like them. And there you go. The thing to remember about these ones is, um, and I could have lowered this a little more, the runners on this, um, even lower. They were 5 eighths inch. I could have gone half an inch easily. You can see that this one has a really tall tab on it and it may cause issues you know when you shut the lid if the box is super full so one of the one of the things i would advise is if you have ones that have oh like clips and things on the top and really high tabs under the higher cards they might not work in these boxes and to lower the um, bracket here this ledge here to half an inch instead of five eighths would probably be the way to go so i'm looking in thrift stores now for oh um any kind of really cute box and what I decided to, I didn't do it on camera, but I am going to glue these in place. I'm just going to put a dab of like E6000 or the power tack and right in these grooves here and glue it in place. So that is that project. I hope that's a helpful idea for you. Just keep an eye out for wooden boxes, cardboard boxes, any kind of box that you find you might be able to make one yourself. <laughs> thank you so much. Please share your ideas in the comments below and give me a thumbs up on the video. And thank you so much for subscribing and supporting my channel. Thank you.